podcast that we have here. What is CrossFit? You're going to find out. Back to the basics, baby. Functional mechanics. That's what we want to see. A press is a press is a press. But we're switching things up. We should see some transferability here. And either you got it or you don't. Ten athletes on the board. We're about to see who has it. Ten women in this fourth and final heat. And overall leader Tia Toomey is back in the familiar leader's jersey. But only clinging to a five-point lead over Mal O'Brien. Tia Toomey starting things off at the Capitol. Chipped away at that overall lead. But it was out here at North Park where Tia Toomey was back to doing Tia Toomey things. Dominating this event from start to finish. But even with that domination, only three points added to that lead against Mal O'Brien. Only leading by five. Stand by. Here we go, 25 calories to start. Now think back to last year, inside the Coliseum, opening night, we had a handstand wall. Mal O'Brien was able to out-duel Tia Toomey for her first career win at the CrossFit Games. And with that handstand walk, that is the initial portion of this handstand push-up in that forward-facing position. Mal O'Brien is probably the best female athlete when it comes to wall walks and so in order to get in that position that's what she's going to need to lean on to make sure that's not as taxing for her inverted mark back to wednesday night the parallel bar transfers into the dip ended up biting tia at the end of that event we have a similar pattern here where you have to walk yourself into position before you can start the rep what are we going to see? We see that wall walk be advantageous to Mal or detrimental to Tia like we saw on Wednesday night. Hand in the air for Mal O'Brien. She is through 20 calories. She's got about a five calorie lead on Tia Toomey. So Toomey is towards the back here on this initial 25 calorie ride. Mal O'Brien is done, she will move to the wall first. Now, Alexis Raptus is done at the top of your screen. She and O'Brien getting to work at the same time. And because Haley Adams and Gabby McGowan. Top in lane one, Raptus in lane one is just repping those out. And Mal O'Brien, that was a tough first rep. You gotta get that forehead into the line. You don't have to pass it just into it. Raptus made a huge splash in quarterfinals. Here comes Toomey as Raptus has already threw her first set of 10. And nobody panic. This is not the first time we've seen Toomey slowest off the first portion of a bike or a row, and that's on purpose. And Tia Toomey. has yet to break here on this first set of 10. She has two reps remaining, and Toomey got through it unbroken. Toomey and Lawson to the break at the same time. Alexis Raptus on the bottom left is your leader. Lawson's in the gray top towards the top of your screen. And Mal O'Brien is having trouble here. Tia Toomey very slow off the first bike on purpose. We've seen this before. Raptus is still your leader. She's almost done with her 15 calorie right now. She is done. She's heading to the wall for her second set of 10 handstand push-ups. Raptus has gotten right to work. Now Mal O'Brien is on the bike. Raptus has six reps remaining on her set of 10. She's on the upper left-hand part of your screen, just got hit with a no rep for not beating depth. Hand in the air for Tia Toomey. There's Raptus. And you think of an air squat. You don't squat to a med ball when you're showing virtuosity in the movement. You know where depth is and you can bounce out of that bottom position. For Raptus, she needs to feel that bottom position instead of search for the bottom position. That'll help her out a lot. Raptus is on the bike in the upper left-hand part of your screen. Second set of 15. 
Tia Toomey and Emma Lawson are to the wall for the second time. Toomey went unbroken on her last set. Here comes Mal O'Brien. Toomey looking to go unbroken yet again as Alexis Raptus is just shaking out her arms, not even using them on the echo break. Savvy move, no need. The mic portion at this moment in the event is basically irrelevant if you can handle the handset push-ups like Raptus has. Toomey back to the break. Tia's mic pace has increased every time she's gotten to the bike. Slowest off round one, faster round two, and push the pace a little bit here in round three. Raptus back to the wall, bottom left hand part of your screen, final ten reps on the handstand push-ups for her. Tubi's down through four of those 15 calories. Raptus more confident than she was previously. When I say get to the bottom, not search for it. When you're searching for it, you start to slow down. You don't get enough little stretch reflex at the bottom part of that press. She's moving a lot faster than she did on that second set. Raptors down with a no wrap for Judge explaining it to her. Raptors right back to work. Emma Lassa on the right side of the black pants is to the Bike for the second set of 15. And Tia Toomey is set to close out her round of 15 on the bike. Raptors is done, and Raptors will go back to the final 25 calories here. 801.72 seconds is the time to beat the likes of Emma McQuaid, but maybe not for much longer. Now here comes Tia Toomey to the wall for her final set of 10. It's not a lot of times you get an opportunity to win an event at the CrossFit Games. There's been less opportunities to win an event at the CrossFit Games by being that athlete to the right of your screen. still add 97 points to her total if she can get in inside that time. What's good for her is Mal O'Brien is on the bike behind her. She still has 10 handstand push-ups to go, so this is a great opportunity for Tia to extend that lead. Tia Toomey's family on the left, the first time they have all been here to watch her compete in person. Final calories for Tia Toomey. And embracing her family across the finish line. Now we have to see what Emma Lawson is able to do. Lawson is still on her final set of handstand push-ups. Emma McQuaid is going to lock up third place in the event. Next best time, Caroline Spencer, 836.64. That would be good for fourth. No rep for Emma Lawson. She still has two remaining. Mal O'Brien is back to the wall for the final time as well. O'Brien is the four of her final time. Now Lawson onto the plate. That's great for Lawson and the position she was. And one for her is just 
I mean, we thought just getting in the top 10 was great for a rookie. We saw that with Mal O'Brien last year, getting 7th, 8th overall. For Emma Lawson, she's knocking on the door of holding on to a podium position. I mean, if you're not excited about the future of the women's division, I do not know what to tell you at this point. Ariel Lowen is on to the Echo Bike as well. Lowen is now through three of those 25 calories, and she is creeping up on Emma Lawson. She's within three right now. Lowen is closing the gap. Lawson is through 16. Lowen is through 13. And Brooke Wells is on the bike as well. Emma Lawson across the finish line. So she holds off Ariel Lowen. 943.37 is going to be good for ninth in the event. Huge for Lawson, who needs to get closer to Mal O'Brien. There's also a battle between fourth and fifth as Lowen's trying to close out. Lowen's sitting at seventh overall. And now she is in. Haley Adams is trying to get away from Danielle Brandon. That's a race for the top five. She's only separated by six points. There's Brooke Wells, who has 13, now 12 calories left. She's the only woman on the bike for the final time. Now Mal O'Brien pops on. And this is great for Mal O'Brien, or for Emma Lawson, is if more athletes can sneak between her and Mal O'Brien as Mal's getting to the bike as he said. Emma Lawson coming into this event. If you look at the top 10, that's about seven places on the leaderboard. O'Brien and O'Connell are on the screen. O'Brien's at the top, O'Connell's at the bottom, and there's Fraser. O'Connell is through 21 over 25 dollars. He's on the top hand is in the air. Haley Adams is to the bike as well. It's good for Haley to try to keep herself in the top five. O'Brien is telling she is a cross. Tia Toomey cheering on Chrissy O'Connell. Now O'Connell is done. So O'Brien's going to take 15th in the event. Now O'Brien got past O'Connell. We're talking about working on weakness. Impressive line at the end for O'Brien. Now Haley Adams. She's still in the position of knocking on the door for the podium. But she, again, she has to get away from Danielle Brandon, who's six points behind her. Brandon is still stuck on the wall for the last set of handstand push-ups. Haley Adams not going to be able to make it, but a great effort from her. Alexis Raptus is going to win the event. Her first career event win as an individual at the CrossFit Games. Tia Toomey will finish in second, and she will widen her lead over Mal O'Brien by 39 points unofficially. We've seen in years past, going into Saturday, that number looked like 239 points. So, Medeiros, Medeiros has gotten closer to Gerard, dropped that to 25. Tia has extended that lead to 30 plus unofficially. But Alex Raptis, coming out hot from the beginning, Tia, that slow start on purpose in the front, but for Raptus, what's huge for her is that, listen, she had a great early campaign of qualifying, but it's a big stage here at the CrossFit Games, and to get a win and solidifying a top 10 place going into the 